Martín. Hi, Melissa. I'm excited. One minute, it's one minute away. This is exciting. Hey, Melissa, should I just go ahead and get started or should I wait like for people to come? Because it's 801. So I don't know if it'll just be kind of more recorded when people watch later. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm so excited. Um, thank you guys for watching. Um, I know in this day, <laughs> this is December 1st, so holidays are among us. And I know I'm busy with kids and doing all the mom things. So just for you to like carve out time just to listen, I'm so excited. I wish we could be in person because that's my love language is like in real life relationships. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about today is building a business that you love and that does not wear you out, <laughs> that can actually stand the test of time because it is, it's you, it means something really important to you. So, um, Dale Garnegie, I don't know if you guys ever listened to him, but him and Brene Brown are some of my favorite relationship, um, coaches or mentors. Um, I took a Dale Carnegie class right after college and it really shaped the way I think about people. And I think a lot of times in this business, obviously we know this is a relationship, um, based business and you can't get anywhere without caring about people. And if you do, it won't last for long. So, um, but Dale Carnegie says that he has this really interesting quote is that if people are really concerned so much with themselves and sales, and it's really not about them at all, it's about others. Um, and if people want something, they buy it. Like nobody really wants to be sold. And so I kind of take that through everything. Like when you are looking for a baby bottle or a diaper to use or a college to go to or a car or any of these things, like you kind of shop around, right? You ask the people that you trust, you think about what you want, and then you look for the creative solution for that. So um, I think a lot of times in sales, sometimes we're thinking about ourselves and in our relationships, we block ourselves from the sale. So in order to not do that, we have to do a couple things. I want to encourage you to do a couple things. Um, First of all, if you don't have higher unity, um, save your ER, LR, loyalty rewards, whatever you want to call it, save them and um, buy this. This this blend actually helps you communicate better. So that's my um, interesting part about communication is relationships um, don't work without communication. So whether it's our husbands, whether it's our children, whether it's our sales, like people that uh, we work with in our business, we have to talk to them. And I think 
um, there needs to be this open line of communication and our mindset really needs to be focused on them. And so asking a lot of questions, um, Dale Carnegie also says to be interested, no, to be interesting, be interested. And I think that's a thing like people want to talk about themselves a lot. So ask people questions. It doesn't matter if you're at Target. Um, uh, it doesn't matter if you're at Sam's buying groceries or wherever you are at the pickup line, at the coffee shop, like everywhere you go, if you are interested in people, they can all become part of your team eventually, right? And this, this is not a, you know, a quick thing. Relationships take time, effort, and energy. And so all the things that I'm going to tell you today, obviously, I just want to plant them in seeds and then whatever you like, keep whatever you think is crazy, let it go. But I think the more that we are curious, um, the more people that are curious about us too. So obviously make sure you are smiling. I think the first time people meet you, they're going to have a, um, a desire to either know more about you and a smile is just the easiest way to start a conversation. So um, having oils with you all the time makes it super simple to talk to people. Um, my favorite trick is getting, I call it a trick, but maybe it's a smart business move. I don't know, but getting a really cute bag that you like. Um, I like the neon hot pink bags from, um, I just forgot what they're called. Those really, anyways, it's neon and it has a little patch and it's so cute. And I put my favorite oils inside of it. Um, and every time I was in a large group of people and I got it out, people just looked. And so they wanted to know, and I'd always say like, Oh, Hey, do you want, and I would always offer to use my oils. Um, I never really gave samples. So kind of how I think about that is if you love something and you treasure it, you don't give it away for free. And so what I found, um, what I found a lot of people doing when I first started the business is just giving things away. And I love to give things away generously. Like if you're in my house, um, I offer Ningxia or Zing, or I'm, I'm constantly giving things away, like in that sense, but I'm not like giving samples, you know? Um, so anyways, when I meet someone, say I'm at Target and the lady is coughing or sneezing and I'm like, oh my gosh, are you okay? I ask questions. Um, they usually want to talk and say, yeah, I am struggling my allergies and I always have something to give, um, to try. And I think it's interesting because there are times where people are so, so like shocked and they don't, they're like, no, no, no. They think you're like giving them something illegal or whatever. But I think over time you get used to this. And I just consider that like, um, it's kind of a form of rejection. Right. And so I think if you're not like used to it, you can get discouraged, but it's just because people usually need to hear things like seven, 10, 15 times before they really like understand it and grasp and, um, just feel like they are open to it. So don't lose heart, stay consistent with it. But, um, I think it's really important just to be open and that people can see the way that you live and that you use oils because that builds trust. And after trust in a relationship comes the confidence and whenever they're ready, they're going to ask you. Um, I know I didn't talk about how I got started in oils, but I think it's really interesting that Melissa Kohler is my enroller and I didn't know her per se. And so I was so excited when I got the opportunity to use oils, I knew exactly who I was going to ask. She was my first ask for oils because I knew she was genuine. Um, I knew she would tell me the truth. And I think that trust, um, it obviously came on social media. Um, and I didn't know her in real life, but she is exactly who she portrays on social media. So it was a really easy, um, ask for me. And she, um, she just led me through that whole journey of getting started with oils just from her being herself. So I think relationships are tricky when social media is involved because there's like this real life thing. And then there's this social media, you know, perceived like what we show and what we allow. So 
when you're thinking about building a business, um, thinking specifically about what you want people to remember about you and then portraying that and focusing on that and maybe creating content around that, um, people will always remember how you made them feel. And at the end of the day, every interaction um, is going to represent young living in a way. So I think it's a huge superpower to remember to sometimes not speak. Um, sometimes, you know, ask just questions about themselves and just be interested in others versus yourself. And if you take yourself out of the equation and you're serving others by being really invested in what they need. So some of my favorite questions to ask, you know, whether I'm at the soccer practice with moms or whatever is, you know, what are you looking like? What do you want to feel or what do you want? Cause like, if I have my bag of oils, right. People are interested and they're like, what, what does this one do? And what does this one do? And so I think it's really fun to just let them, you know, take it off and smell. And obviously I have my favorites. And so I just tell them one amazing thing about it that I know moms, right? Because I'm in this season with them. And so I'm like, oh, white Angelica, I love this before bed. As we pray, we put this on my, you know, my little one's spine. We talk about the day. It's just a very part, like staple in our bedtime routine. And it literally helps to have the most peaceful sleep. And then moms want that, especially if their daughter is waking up in the middle of the night with nightmares or something like that. And so I mean, I've given my bottle from that bag and I've had, um, just moms be so grateful and text me and, and it's like, it's like we're in a relationship, right? Like they get something out of it. I get something out of it because I'm helping them. They trust me and they know that I'm not just trying to make a dollar. Like it really is about their family and their success. And so there's this long relationship that is built, um, and I think it's, it's important to know that it's not just going to be like a quick, like sometimes they might have, um, um, a journey like that they can't start right then. Um, but when you ask them questions and when you're more invested in them, it will not be, um, it won't be a waste. And I think that's kind of something to keep in, um, mind is like, what can you do for them? And then, um, Okay. So facts, I want to talk about five steps to building your relationship. So we know creating value. That's kind of what I was talking about. I've been jumping all over the place, um, but solving their problems, asking what they need help with. And one of my favorite events that I did with creating value was Valentine's day. And I made a custom roller for each person. So they told, um, they told me what they wanted to feel what emotion they wanted to feel. Cause obviously love everybody, um, generally has this, um, self-esteem, like they just want to love themselves more. And it was, it was powerful to listen to 40, 60 women talk about this all. And joy was almost in all of their, um, rollers. So what I've started doing recently is just keeping joy in my car. And I can't tell you the amount of people that respond positive to, positively to smelling that like on me as I get out of the car and go do something. And it's a great uh, opening. So if there's an oil blend that you love, um, I just want to encourage you to be bold and take a step and sharing it with somebody and just doing it over and over. Um, Carol, this event was actually, I paired up with this amazing medical spa. Like it was dreamy inside. It was like all concrete. It looks like a dream and they were doing an event. And so they had invited everybody. And so I didn't know anybody there. And that was what I got their information, like through an email. And that was my like cost of doing the event. I didn't have to pay anything. I just donated the oils that I made, but I think what I loved about it was that everybody felt really special and seen and heard, um, because they had, you know, like a couple minutes to talk, just me and them. And they got to tell me their story and like what they wanted. And it was kind of like a shotgun, like, I don't know, fast dating, like speed dating, you know, where people are like, I just feel so insecure. Like, I just want to love my body the way it is, or I just want to, 
you know, not need this, or I don't know, just it, all their stories were beautiful really to hear. And I just heard the same theme over and over and over and over. And it just really, I mean, obviously we're more alike than we're different. Right. Um, but I think part of relationships and doing these events is like, I'd never done that before. And so it was like taking a leap of faith, but it was doing something that I was passionate about. Like I want women to love themselves and I want them to feel confident. And I know like, obviously the power of just smelling your perfume and how it can change your day and it can change your mindset and your words and how your words are so powerful to create what you, your reality. So I think part of, you know, this talk about building your business on relationships is just leaning into what feels right for you, but being like comfortable in the uncomfortable. So a lot of times we shrink back to, you know, like just our friends, our circle, the people that are safe. Um, and it's always great to have that, but just being confident and stepping out and trying new events or, um, maybe inviting like a book club over where that normally isn't something that you would do and like hosting them and just letting them see the diffusers run and the bathroom and the kitchen and all the different spaces and how you use oils and how young living really is. It's not just one thing. It's kind of integrated in all of that. Um, people are curious and they want to know, but they just don't want to be sold, you know? And so it's, um, I think it's really a great way to connect and create value um, just by asking them. Like, I think so many times we assume what they need or assume, um, but we just need to ask. So um, I, um, I, think, I think we just need to ask, ask more questions, assume less, right? Okay, so um, when we are inviting people to make the sale, because um, after somebody has an amazing experience, right? Giving them the next step, and not having like any emotions tied to whether they do or not. Um, that took me a lot to kind of get over when people were like, oh, I just don't feel like starting right now. And I was like, what did I do wrong that they didn't think that they should join? Like this wasn't worthy of their time, effort, and energy. But sometimes it's, we don't know their journey. We don't know where they are, but when we stay consistent and when we continue to, you know, be a part of their lives, they come to us when they need us. And, um, I've just seen so many like people who were so skeptical of oils. Cause obviously the skeptical people talk <laughs> way louder than the people that are like ready to buy. It's weird. Um, but anytime, um, Anytime somebody needs something and you're like, oh, I have a solution, uh, especially like Valor is something that I use for everything, but I don't know if you guys know, but Valor is amazing for headaches. So oftentimes strangers, or I say strangers, but like friends who are not really that close to you that you're maybe in like dance class or, you know, if, if somebody says they have a headache, then you have a solution, right? You're like, oh, do you want my Valor? And I think just making it not weird just helps, but they're like, Valor, yeah, I have Valor at home, but I don't, I never knew how to use it. And then teaching them in that moment, um, a lot of people have, you know, enrolled and heard about oils m years ago, four years, six years, and then they just haven't, they have all these things and they don't know how to use them. So even taking the time to teach people at that point has been really beneficial because they're like, oh, Valor. Okay. And how I found that out is I was breastfeeding and, you know, peppermint's not good for your milk supply. So, um, but Valor is one of those, like for birth, especially during transition, when you think you're going to die, Valor is just so special to me. Obviously I think we all have a, an amazing story about Valor. Um, but just keeping the oils in the midst of my life and sharing them with people have built so many relationships that I probably didn't even consider being possible. Um, like there was this boy one time that was working out and he really wanted a supplement for his, his joints. 
you know, cause working out, it puts a lot of pressure on, he was a bodybuilder. And so I was just talking to him last night and he was telling this group of kids and the kids was like, oh yeah, my mom has that at home. It was a supplement that I said, and, and he was like, it was BLM. And he was like, that's so crazy. My mom has young living. I'm going to tell her to buy that. And so I just, I smile because it's like the ripple effect of just sharing a product one time, like people will keep talking about it and telling them, and then it all comes back to you, you know, like, um, I think giving them an experience versus just telling them, obviously you want to tell them what it does for you, but allowing them to have an experience really changes the whole, uh, dynamic, um, of, of the whole experience. So I think it's also asking, um, okay. So getting their agreement. So that's the number three. So when you talk to people like asking them what they need, but then repeating that so that they hear you. This is part of communication that is vital. So, oh, I hear you saying that you're struggling with your kids sleeping and you would like to find a solution for worry or fear or anxiety. And you could easily say, oh, like Valor and White Angelica are my favorite for this or Cedarwood or Vetiver or whatever you've used. Um, I think getting just people want to be heard. And when you answer so fast that we don't let them talk, it kind of like, uh, I don't know. It doesn't feel like a partnership. So, um, I just want to remind you to do that. Um, I think as long as you're relatable and as long as you are authentic and Brene Brown talks about being vulnerable. And I think some of our stories with oils, especially for me with birth, it's easy to talk with another woman about birth. Um, but some of our things are really personal and it's hard, um, to be vulnerable because of rejection or shame or guilt. And I think that's the first thing that people are going to look for in a relationship with you as a friend or as a mentor or as someone they can look up to and trust about their wellness journey. Um, because this is not something that just like happens overnight, right? You don't just like suddenly know how to use, um, 80 oils and, you know, all the supplements and just feel really confident. So we need to build this relationship with our, um, our friends and to help them and to celebrate. And so I think just allowing them to see how you live and being vulnerable is going to create so much trust. And I think you being brave with trying new things, trying, um, new, like if it's a social, like interaction in real life, if that feels uncomfortable to you, you doing that, don't forget to celebrate. Like, I, I hope everybody has one person that is their safe person that they will hold them accountable. Um, but they'll also push you to go outside your comfort zone. Um, I just think the whole thing of building a business with young living is uncomfortable. And I said that earlier, but you have to get comfortable in the uncomfortable. If social media is uncomfortable for you, make an accountability text with one person, two persons, three persons, and get dirty, like get uncomfortable, check in every day. Um, I think have fun with it because that totally will attract people who are really passionate and ready to run with you because it's fun because you feel alive and you are like tapped into your purpose. Um, if you have not done this before, I think writing down the things obviously that you want people like after they leave you, what you want them to feel. And then that being a part of your brand and how you market and how you put yourself out there on social media, but also how you represent people. Um, I want to be generous and I want to be kind. So I, I've done things that, 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 that live up to that. So the kids schools that I go to, Obviously I want them to diffuse oils because of the benefits for everyone. Um, but being generous to people who can never repay you is 
like, although you think you're doing it for them, it actually blesses you so much. And it just builds that in yourself. It like builds you up when you serve others. And when you're actually not just getting something out of the relationship, like building your third leg, you know, or building your fourth leg, we all have to be smart and make strategic decisions. But I think the bigger thought is this is all a long-term strategy. Like nothing about this is quick and you never know where it will go. You won't know. Um, but I think if you're being true to yourself um, and you're really loving and caring about people, they'll know. They will feel it when they talk to you. Um, they know that you're different. They know that they can see how the oils help you. They can see how the products help you. Um, it's just a really amazing company to be a part of because throughout the eight years that I have been with Young Living, I have changed so much. I mean, I've changed the way my first birth was a, was a, a scheduled C-section. Um, I started Young Living. I did an unmedicated VBAC that actually failed and ended up in a C-section. And then I had a, another VBAC that was successful, but I needed a little bit of assistance and I, it was, it was really rough. And then I had another successful VBAC. So I've had four births and they're all different. And I just think how I parent, how my marriage, like how I communicate, how I show up for myself, um, it's all changed and evolved. And I think as long as we are continuing to put ourselves in these new situations where we're not just with the same five people every day. Like I love, I love the inner circle and I love that, but you also have to think like bigger and, um, getting in new groups and new, whatever you're doing, like you just have to add people to your life. And honestly, it's like, when you sit and think about making a list of the people that you want on your team, like your dream team, if you haven't done that, I'm assuming you have, because you guys are all really smart. Um, but maybe even, cause it's been a couple months before I've really thought about this myself. So maybe this is for me, but today I challenge you with me tonight, before you go to bed, to think of five people that you want to add to your list and that you want to really focus on this month, adding value to their life. So maybe that looks like bringing them a meal because they just had a baby. Maybe that looks like getting coffee with them, you know, bringing, bringing oils and supplements along that might be able to fit right in with their life that you can share and have an opportunity to, you know, connect with them about, but maybe it's more general than that. Like maybe it's about something else, but intentionally adding people to your favorites. So that's one of my favorite tricks is like, you know, on your phone where you can, your shortcuts on your favorites, adding those people there. So it keeps you accountable to checking in with them often. Um, it's really hard to keep up with, you know, the thousands of followers that maybe you have, or people like these hundreds of people, right. But narrowing it down to focusing on a certain group of people that you really want in your life will just build that momentum to have a deeper relationship. Um, and I think it's really smart to focus on people and obviously it's for a season. Like, I don't think, I don't think things have to stay the same forever and you can add and move people as things change around. But I think Gary Young was such a good example of this because, you know, he just felt like dog sledding. And so he taught himself how to do this and he like, he did it and he did it really well. And he met a lot of people along the way. And that's kind of the whole point of this, right? Is that there's ripples all over. Like if anybody is in contact with you, they know um, that there's something different about you. So a lot of that is inner work, right? Showing up every morning, waking up with that fire and passion inside of you takes a lot of work. <laughs> so some of the mishaps that I've learned over the last couple of years maybe I've let offense get in the way of people like, right. Like 
I like everyone, but that person, <laughs> like, I don't really. <laughs> okay. So being offended is something that you have to take radical responsibility for. <sighs> and as easy as it is to like people that are just likable and lovable, um, I think there's a lot to learn from everyone. So don't be offended. Try to find something that you guys have in common. Um, I'm trying to teach my boys this right now in hockey. There is, there's this friend that they have that's pretty brutal. And there's a lot of differences they have, but I do know they have things in common. And so that's what we've talked about a lot is just finding unity and remembering that we are more alike than we are different. So if you guys have any questions, I would so love to help you. <laughs> this is Stella. She's my littlest. She just turned four. And then, um, but anyways, if you have questions, there's some friends, but I would love to ask. You can message me anytime, but you guys just have a good night. And thank you for jumping in. Hi. Say hi. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. Bye, guys.